Hi, and welcome back to another series of How to Hack. So today we're going to go through the browser exploitation framework. And what is really powerful about this tool is that we could use it literally with any kind of devices. It could be from a web browser, from the laptops, from the desktops, and it could even be the Android devices that are coming or or not just from Android devices, but it could also be iOS, it could be Apple phones, or tablets that are coming in and we are able to plant a hook JavaScript that could actually help us manipulate the browser and we could steal cookies from it, we could steal important data from it, and we are able to control a lot of different activities around in the in the browser and it is really, really interesting. And today we're gonna to go through a demonstration with it. So as as can be understood, you know, there's a huge rise in in a number of enterprises who are adopting bring their own device policies where employees could actually bring the or use their own mobile devices to access enterprise content. And how how are we gonna segregate between what is personal and what is enterprise content? What is how, how are you gonna protect against those sensitive documents? I think while you're looking at the demonstration today, it is gonna be imperative that you actually think about all these questions as you're learning about how to input the defense mechanisms in your environment. All right, so over here on the foreground, I have Android device running over here. And on the back end, I have Kali Linux running. So of course, I can enter the username as root. And of course, you enter in the password to access your Kali Linux. So now while we are waiting for Kali Linux to load, so we're going to launch the uh, browser exploitation framework as spoken earlier. So all you got to do is cd to usr, share bif xss, which is cross-site scripting. So entering ls, you can see all the files and folders within the directory of bif xss. So in order for us to start bif, pretty straightforward. You just have to enter dot slash bif and hit enter. So while bif is loading now, it's going to take a little while. So as you can see over here, it's a browser exploitation framework. You can see the version number of this. However, what's what's really more important is what is their status? What are the items that we have to watch out for? So if you were to look over here on the hook URL, as well as the user interface URL. So these are the two important functions for us to go through today. So the hook.js is the malicious JavaScript that will load for us to have control over the Android browser. And then of course the user interface panel is the control panel where we will do our attacks from. So let's open up Ice Weasel, which is a, a web browser for us to access the browser exploitation framework user interface. So you just have to enter 127.0.0.1, which is the local host, port 3000 slash UI slash panel, and you hit enter. So this would bring us to the BIF console, the login screen. So you enter BIF as well as the password as BIF. So if this is your first time logging in, chances are your username is going to be BIF and password is going to be BIF. You can look at the configuration file within the folder and you'll be able to see where some of the items available for you to, to manipulate on. So this is the, the administrator page for BIF and you can read through what are some of the commands and what are some of the items or the legends that you can look at and try to understand each of the command and try to know exactly what to do. So in the long run, it's going to benefit you a lot more. So on the left side, we can see what are the hooked browsers. So we have online browsers as well as offline browsers. So offline browsers are a history of browsers that are currently no longer engage with your hook.js, so you can no longer manipulate them. However, when you click in, you can see the, the details of the, of this history of the device that was connected to your hook.js. And what are some of the locks that you did? What were some of the items that I was testing out against before today's demonstration? What are the commands that you can try to issue? However, of course, as the browser is not online right now, so we're unable to do that. And moving forward, so what we're going to do is to enable the hook.js. So moving forward, let's go to the URL link over here, which is 127.0.0.1, port 3000, and hook.js. So let's enter hook.js and take a look at what exactly is this JavaScript looking like. So if you were to study the function over here and, and really try to understand exactly 
what this hook JS is written for, you will begin to understand exactly what are each of the functions meant for. And it's really powerful in a sense that it could manipulate the, the browser in ways that are unimaginable. And we're going to go to some of the features and functions later on. So all we got to do is to ensure that we are able to load the hook.js onto the victim's machine. And of course, in this case, it will be the Android virtual machine. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to the Android virtual machine and we're going to open up a, a, a browser, for example. So you can actually do a search straight away on Google. And of course, I'm going to click no thanks. So this is the, this is the place where you will enter the, the URL of the site. And of course, the idea is to have us be able to launch the hook.js. So in order to send us the link, it could be through phishing attacks. It could be through social media attacks where you send a link to the, to the user for them to click onto. And once they click onto it, we'll be able to gain access into it. So moving back to color Linux, what we have to do next is to load a, a web server where we can host the hook.js. So moving forward, you can see over here that we will go to the CD VAR LS. So we have a index.html. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a gedit into the index.html. So pretty standard index.html over here. However, what's really the salient point is looking at this script over here. So script source is HTTP 192.168.1.18 port 3000 and hook.js. So if we were to tally against the IP information over here of this machine, we have a IP address of 192.168.18. So moving back to the document over here, this will be calling the the IP address and then having hosted the hook.js. So we're able to load the the JavaScript the moment the user were to enter the the web application server they are hosted on this code Linux. So with this we're able to cl close this particular document. And we're going to host the server by entering service. Uh, let's see if Aperture is already started. So let's enter status. So Aperture 2 is not running. So let's start it up. Aperture 2 start. So starting web server. So of course, we are able to start a web server properly. And going back to the Android device. So what we can do is, so taking the example that we have sent a link to the user and the user decided to click onto the link. So it's going to be 192.168.1.18, of course, remember the IP address, slash. So you just have to enter and we'll be launched into the index.html. So over here you see it works. This is the default web page for the server. The web server software is running, but no content has been added yet. So that's great. We managed to load exactly what we have hosted. So going back to color Linux, we can see over here onto Ice Weasel and back to the Biv control panel, we can see there's an online browser. That's great. So we have what we see over here as 192.168.1.18, which is the hosting server. And of course, we have the IP address of 192.168.1.4, which is the victim machine. And of course, we can see all the items associated with this particular browser. So we can see the, the type web Browser is coming in. What is the operating system type, which is Linux? Android 444 is actually running a virtual box, which I am running right now. And of course, it's running 4.0. It could be, it could be Chrome. It could be Safari. So that's what they're trying to tell you. And of course, the platform is a Linux i686. So it tells you a lot of information regarding this particular browser. And it could be the browser components could be the different components that are being loaded as well. So all these are going to be pretty important and imperative for you to to know, to jot down, to pen it down into a document so that later on you know exactly uh, there are potentially exploits that you can run directly into the Android device. So moving forward, we're going to go over to the command site. And over here, we have the different modules that are, that we can use to actually try to gain different, different activities, malicious activities to, against the, the web browser. So over here, we have the social engineering module and we can go to pretty tough. So in pretty tough, we can actually launch a fake Facebook dialog box that will pop up asking the user for a Facebook username and password. So we can click execute. And the module results history will be listed over here. So it shows the command running. And going back to Android, we see while waiting, we see, okay, there you go. We have it. So we managed to see exactly what is the, the status of, 
of the Facebook session timeout pop up. So it looks pretty, pretty nonchalant and different. So sometimes user are going to just think that, oh, okay, this is going to be uh, just another pop up from Facebook. So they will enter user and they will enter password as their password. And once they were to enter login, which I've done over here, the information is going to be passed over to browser exploitation framework. So going back to color Linux, you click onto the module results history. You see that we got on the data over here. Answer is user and password is password. So we got on the information that we needed to, to gain unauthorized access and we could use the username and password to access that social media site. And of course, there are many other, other capabilities that we can do with, with browser exploitation framework. And there are so many different modules. Uh, chances are I won't be able to go through all of them today. They will probably be for subsequent videos. So stay tuned. And lastly, I just want to show uh, pretty pretty cool stuff over here, which is the redirect browser. So of course, I can redirect the entire browser into something like Yahoo.com. However, imagine if you're a, if you're an authentic hacker, chances are you want to do commercial exploits. You want to gain fraudulent. Uh, capabilities to gain some kind of unauthorized access so you might push the redirect site into a into a fake website or you could be pushing it to uh, some some sites that would try to gain financial data or details of the browser and from the user so all you got to do is click execute and we see that the command has been executed into the browser and moving back to the the browser of the android we see that oh there you go we got redirected to yahoo.com and there, there you go. There you have it. And there you have it. You know, we realized how easy and how quickly it was to just implant a JavaScript that could help us manipulate many of these uh, activities that we can gain different kind of data from the web browser. We could control, redirect the entire browser to another site and for, for commercial purposes, for financial gains, for malicious activities in general. So I think as, as, as a way to summarize today's, uh, today's demonstration and presentation is really for you to think about what is the future? What is the future of Android protection or defenses against many of these browser based attacks? So previously, if you were to look at some of the Android attacks, it primarily come from installing applications, installing malicious applications. But what if, you know, you could have an extender and an immediate control to the browser that users always, always have sessions into? What if you could plant just a JavaScript into a legitimate site that could actually install or so-called run the JavaScript, the hook JavaScript? And then what do you do then? What are the policies to protect your users? What are the policies to, to protect your enterprises from being attacked through the, the web browser content? So with that, I thank you for your time and feel free to subscribe.